those of you that uh, know me know I have a and a microphone and speaking in front of people. And rarely do I ever write anything down or just come off the cuff. But uh, this one I had to, uh, I had to put on paper. What I have right now is probably one of the most difficult tasks that anyone could possibly have. I have to find a way to sum up my feelings and emotions about my mother in a short speech. The most eloquent speaker in the world, reading a speech by the most creative speechwriter in the world could not accomplish this feat. There's no way that I could, be, I could convey the amount of respect, admiration, and love I have for this woman. But I'll give it a shot. And excuse the brevity of this, I can only get through so much. My mother played so many roles in my life. She was my rock, my center, and my comfort. The relationship that we had was very well known to everyone about how close it was. Now, it always was close, but it definitely morphed and changed after my father passed. Well, before, in my, in my youth, it was such that she played the role of a caring and loving mother who would teach and mold me with the intention of me growing up with the most advantages and in the best manner possible. And of course, I made plenty of mistakes, well, too many mistakes, uh, but she never judged me for those, and she never scolded me. She always tried to teach me from learn, to learn from those mistakes and use that as a means by which to evolve as a person. Now, after Dad passed away, that didn't change. She still had that role, but it grew, and a new friendship really, really emerged. We became a team. And I knew that I could rely on her for anything. She was my consult on so many personal issues that were countless to me. And uh, much like she did with people in this room, she took on my problems as her own. Her number one goal in life was to make life easier for those that she cared for. And I, along with Antonio, were certainly at the center of that. Where there is a giant hole in my heart right now, I'm trying to do my best to focus on the positive. I'm trying to focus on the blessings that are there with, from her existence on this earth. And the first blessing I can think of is the way she touched the lives of so many. And because of that, I now have a huge extended family. The outpouring of love, excuse me, the outpouring of love and care is overwhelming for me. And I really feel that I'm not alone. I thank you all for the love that I have received and the love my mother's in heaven thanking all of you as well. The second blessing is that my son Antonio was able to spend his early childhood with his Coco. It is such a tragedy that Antonio was not able to meet his grandfather, Roger, who we all know was a really great man and had much to teach my son. But I know that he will treasure the memories he was able to create with Coco. She cared for him so deeply, and that she helped inspire him in his early years of development to become the best man he can be. And boy, is he off to a great start. The last conversation I had with my mother was on the phone. And actually, Antonio was in the car, and it was via Bluetooth so he could hear. After some quick little banter, she made a point to ask Antonio how his school week was, and he said he was doing great, his grades were great. And she made it a point to tell him how proud of him she was and how much she loved him. And so, you know, it is very, very important that you remember those words, and you remember that voice, and you keep doing what you're doing. But she's going to be up there looking out for you. The third lesson is that, well, in the words of the great Luke Eric, I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I'm the luckiest person because I have spent 40 years calling her mother. But actually, that's inaccurate. I never called her mother. I called her Zion. Zion is, if you don't know, Zion is her birthday. And I always thought that name was beautiful. And I love that name. But I was the only one to call her that. And that was kind of a special thing between us. Well, I'm going to get to that. And she didn't call me son. See, when my father was alive, he was Mr. and I was her Mr. Reno. Uh, but after father passed, I guess my title graduated and I became her Mr. Anyway, back to what I was saying. 
Uh, I was the lucky person that was able to see firsthand the amazing person she was, and also be able to learn from her right in front of her. I can only wish that I could raise my son with a fraction of the love, understanding, and dignity that I was given. My biggest goal in life was to make her proud of me as just as much as I was of her. I seriously doubt actually there's no chance I can fill her shoes. She was 10 people in one. <laughs> but I know that she knows, and I know that she's making sure that her spirit will guide me as time goes by. I know it's going to be a bit cliche to say it in a service like this, but she truly was an angel on earth, and now she's able to be in peace. So I don't want to be too long, and this is as much as I can do. I just want to say, Zenaida, take care of Michelle from your listener.